Uh, so next up, um, we move on to the 400 grit sandpaper. So we've uh, asked how the surface is dried. Um, uh, we've got the 400 grit sandpaper. So we're going to do exactly the same. I'll start on the um, outside edges, whiz round, and then do the inside. Um, and this time it should go a lot quicker. Uh, what I'll probably do is scribe these lines in again. So that's a nice registration for when we've cast our part and where to trim. All right, T.O., let's crack on. Okay, so I zipped around that and um, did the um, 400 grit pass. So I'd say the 240 grit sounding took about a good hour, good hour, 15 minutes. Um, and that last pass with the 400 grit sandpaper has taken about 20 minutes, if that. So as long as you do a really good job with your, four, um, your first grit sandpaper, which was the 240, um, really helps speed things on later on. Um, still some slight low areas, so the, the whole idea is to sand off all the gloss areas, yeah, because that's going to be where all the low points are. So as you're going along, um, you try to sand off that glossy surface that's created by the um, acetone. don't know whether you'll pick this up in there. I've got some slight, very slight, you can't really feel them, very very slight um, troughs still in this area. Um, you can see them sparkling there a little bit. Um, the wing's good. That seems still good. Still got a little bit of starting to fill there. Um, that little gap is. That's starting to fill nicely. What I'm going to do now is before I um, acetone it again, I'm just got, I've just got a real damp, um, you know, with most of the water taken out of it, just a um, kitchen towel, just a piece of kitchen towel. I'm just going to try and wipe up all the, try and fetch up all the. Um, any dust that's left on that, because like I said, I don't want to be creating work for myself when I put the acetone on. So, I'm not soaking it, I'm just, you know, just giving it, a, using that like a tack cloth um, just to fit up any, any, any dust that might be on there. Might as well go all the way around it as well. Get my fingers in the clean. Oops. Okay, so. What I'm going to do now is let that dry nicely. It won't take long. See, I got some shiny bits here. Ah, it looks alright to me. Ah, that's pretty good. Yeah, obviously, you're always using your nail to to you know run across the surface to see if there's any. Scraping sounds. Um, so that's what we started with, and that's where we are now. Okay, so what we'll do is give that another coat of um, acetone. Soaking it up again, really quick. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a cold at the moment. That's not the acetone, it's just a cold. I 
as always, as soon as you feel the brush going sticky, move on. Yeah, I really need to get that acid, uh, the, um, the bigger vapour bath sorted out, because this, this is probably going to be the last acetone cut I'll be able to give it. And I'll have to move on to um, a lacquer, a clear lacquer, to do the sealing. It's not a huge problem, it works fine, so it would be ideal if I could do the use this sort of acetone process all the way through. Um, it's really easy to get paintbrush marks. Um, I'm actually applying the acetone now. As soon as you feel it sticking, just move on. You can come back over it, um, but you don't want to be dragging paintbrush marks everywhere. A little bit too much acetone on the brush there. It marks the surface really, really easily. Yeah, this will definitely be the last coat I, I, I give it with a brushed on acetone. Um, like I say, if I was um, doing a vapour bath, I could do this all the way through to the finished polished mould. Um, that works great. But, uh, I need to get the vapour bath sorted. Okay, so we're literally ready to rock and roll. <coughs> so next we're going to sand with um, 800 grit, and we're going to do that wet, wet and dry. Um, what you really, um, yeah, what you really want, don't want to do is um, use wet and dry before you've sealed the surface. So what happens is the water will get into the layers and underneath the layers, um, and if nothing else, it looks horrible. Um, you get like watermark stains underneath there, so it's not ideal. Um, so make sure your your surface is sealed before you start using the wet and dry um, grade sandpaper. So we'll go for um, grit. 800 next, um, wet and dry. Not far off now. I'm back. Like I said, um, we're going to do the wet and dry, so we can start the first wet and dry. Again, don't um, do this until you sealed your part, because the water from the wet and dry and the, the grey muck that comes into sandpaper will get underneath there, especially on white or light colours and uh, it just looks awful and once it's underneath the surface you won't ever get it out again so not a problem if you're going to paint it um, but if you're going to leave it as natural plastic you really don't want to use wet and dry until you've got this, your surface either sealed with acetone or a um, lacquer which I'll be using later right so um, some water a sponge um, I'll put a couple of drops of um, what we call washing up liquid here in the UK. Um, don't know what you guys call it in the States. Um, so there's a couple of drops in there, it just helps keep everything nice and clean. Um, another good idea is to move all other bits of sandpaper away from your work area because nothing worse than you're working with your 800 grit, you know, wet and dry, and you accidentally pick up a, I don't know, 240 and you start and that's it, scratched again. So um, yeah, just. A little bit of thought before you start. Um, so yeah, um, and now with the wet and dry, I'll, I'll start just doing like smooth, little round circles. Again, all I'm looking at is removing um, the glass off the surface. Yeah, and once I've removed the glass, that's going to tell me that my surface is um, all level and smooth. Hopefully. Um, okay, so I'm going to put you on time lapse, and we can rock and roll. Mm -hmm. 